Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. We have one more mountain experience, and this time around, we are right in the middle of the week. I invite you to the book of First Kings. We are at chapter 18. We'll begin reading at verse 21 and work our way to verse number 25. And the Holman Bible reads as follows. At verse 21, Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. And if Baal, follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I am the only remaining prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let two bulls be given us. They are to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and place it on the wood, but not light the fire. I will prepare the other bull and place it on the wood, but not light the fire. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of Yahweh, the God who answers with fire. He is God. All the people answered, that sounds good. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Since you are so numerous, choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first. Then call on the name of your God, but don't light the fire. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we invite his presence in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word, maybe our reserves are running low and we need to be revived. We need to be refocused. We need to be fine-tuned. Do so through thy word, for it is like a double-edged sword. May it divide truth from error. May it reach right into the marrow of our bones and give us life and rejuvenation. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, we pray and we ask. Amen. As the custom is, we just have uh, five points to consider, and I'm raring to go at point number one. Notice that there is an issue that you're going to find in the workplace. This is indecision or ignorance, but ultimately all these are expressed in an indecision. How do we come to this indecision? There is also what is known as paralysis by overanalysis. When Elijah speaks to the children of Israel, he asks them, how long are you going to wander between two positions? If God is God, follow him. And if Yahweh is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. Many of us, when presented with two options, we cannot come to a decision on time and even early. We overanalyze and we want to get it right. And in the process, we never get it right. And some of us do not even know our left from right. And in the process of failing to distinguish these, we find ourselves getting it wrong. So some of us result in the wrong decision because of ignorance. And some of us do not make decisions at all because of an overanalysis. We overprocess things. We think way too much. And in the process, we remain silent without making a decision. Either we do not know the right answer or we're overanalyzing. And I want to say unto you, as you are in the workspace this morning, take time to make decisions, make them fast and make them the right ones. Do not overanalyze and lose the whole essence of analysis. At point number two, there is also something that I also want you to take note of. As Elijah speaks to the, to the people who had gathered on that day, he says, I am the only prophet of God that is remaining but Baal's prophets are 450 men. There comes a time when you are in the company and you are working alongside your colleagues and you feel like you are all alone. This is the feeling that Elijah is getting. Maybe you are in a whole sub-business uh, I mean sub -business unit or you're in a department or you're in a, in a section of your organization and you feel like you are pulling alone. This is normal. When you have a lot of pressure, when you have a lot that is ahead of you, many a time you begin to feel like you're alone. But I want to talk to you this morning and say Elijah was not alone and neither are you alone. There is always somebody by your side 
God is always by your side. And secondly, even when you think you are alone, there are colleagues who are always supporting you. You may not readily perceive it because of the pressure that is ahead of you, because of what you have to deal with. But there are people who are already in your corner and they're rooting for you. May I say unto you this morning, you are not alone. Do not get depressed. You are not alone. Find all the faith and courage you need in the Lord. You will make it. You will pull through. At point number three, there is also what we learned when we were at business school. What is management? We were told the simplest definition of management is achieving goals through other people. I want to show you how Elijah goes on a management exercise. How Elijah goes on a management exercise. Listen to what Elijah says. Elijah says to them, let two bulls be given us. We are now at verse number 23. They are to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and on and on. Now, this is one thing I find interesting. Elijah is just coming out from a wilderness where he has been in hiding from Ahab. He has no bull. Elijah has no cattle. This is why he, he was being fed by the raven. This, this is why he even went to the widow's home where he, um, he, 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 he instructed that uh, they, they make the last morsel for him. And look at how Elijah now gets to the mountain top and he's calling for a bull. And this bull is presented to him. And what am I saying unto you? When you are about the Lord's business, you are going to manage through other people. When you are in the workspace, you are also going to manage through other people. You're going to call for bulls that are going to be moved up to the mountain and they shall be placed before you, even though you came through without one. Such is the reality of management. Are you going to be able to be having bulls by the end of the day when you started the day without any? This is the challenge I want to give you. What are you going to have in your hand that you didn't have at the beginning of the task through other people? Point number four. I love how Elijah gives details. He is a good leader. This is not just the distinction of managers, but the distinction of leaders. Leaders set the vision. Leaders make it clear how we are going to get there. Leaders set objectives. They set timelines. They set goals. They set outcomes. They work on the strategy and they make it clear. Many a time, some of us, we fail to execute the strategy because it's not clear where we are going. Look at how Elijah goes about this in respect of the sacrifice. He gives detail. He gives detail. And I want to challenge you, while you're in the workspace, especially in a position of leadership, do you give express and explicit details? He says, let two bulls be given unto us. And even if those two bulls are to be given us, this is what is going to happen. So paragraph one, they are to choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces after choosing it, and number three, place it on the wood. Number four, do not light the fire. You know, this is clear. You choose, you cut it, you place it on the wood, you do not light the fire. While you're at it, I will also do something. I will prepare the bull. My other bull, the one which is remaining because you have chosen. So the one that is remaining does not need to be chosen. I will prepare that one. I'll place it on the wood, but I will not light the fire. When we are done, you will call on the name of your God. I will call on the name of Yahweh. Clear procedures, well documented. And what is the expected outcome? How do we verify the results? The God who answers with fire, he is God. Don't you wish you had a superior who would give you so much detail? Only those who spend in the word of the Lord will know this. You need to give detail. You need to always give detail. And when you give detail and it is clear, guess what? Guess what? Then the people answered. That sounds good. When we give express details, we get people to an aha moment. We drive towards a consensus and this is our drive. This is our mandate as leaders. We must get to a consensus where people are going to say, that sounds good. Even though they could not answer in the past, between Yahweh and Baal, who is God, they could not give an answer. But when details are given, when they are taught, when it is clearly laid out, they say, that is good. And at point number five, as we come to an end, 
Listen to how Elijah ends. He says, but, this is Elijah to the prophets of, of Baal, you are so numerous, since you're so numerous, choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first. Then call on the name of your God, but don't light the fire. This is Elijah being courteous. This is Elijah being a gentleman. He knows there are many. He knows they are in the home territory in quotes. But he then says, you go first. Having courtesy, etiquette is something that is godly. It is biblical to just have other people go ahead of you. Even when you're at the workplace, you lose nothing by getting to the door and saying, please, go ahead. You lose nothing by even allowing others to dish first when you go for lunch. That is something that is godly. You, what do you have to fear if the Lord is on your side? Even though you are not, you're outnumbered, you can still say, you go first. You go first. Let us consider this particular passage as we read on from verse 26 on Friday morning. Until we meet again, may God bless you. May God prosper you. And may God turn you into a leader par excellent. To be continued.